Hey guys, today we are talking all about finding the perfect engagement ring. What's up guys, welcome back to Gensange. I'm George, this is Blake. If you have not hit that subscribe button yet, please do that right now. It really, really helps us out and it is completely free. Today we are talking a little bit about marriage, specifically the point right before you get married, the engagement. So Blake and I are both married. I've been married a year plus. You've been married two years two plus. Two years, yeah, yeah, two years plus. So we got a little time under our belt, under the marriage, but we want to talk a little bit about finding the right engagement ring if you are thinking about popping the question. So today we have collaborated with the Gemological Institute of America, GIA, which is pretty much the standard that grades all diamonds so you can know that you're getting a quality diamond. And if you don't have this grading on your diamond, you're probably buying it from <laughs> someplace you shouldn't be buying it from. So always look for the GIA rating on the diamond and today we're gonna to talk a little bit about what the four C's mean, the cut, the color, the clarity, and the carrot, and kind of how to find the perfect diamond for you. So before we go into picking the perfect diamond, it's really important to have an idea of what your significant other wants in a ring. So it's really not, there's no easy way to hint around like, what kind of wedding ring do you want, honey? Like it doesn't really work like that. So you kind of got to listen over the course of your relationship and gather some hints, maybe ask her sister or her friend or someone that she's close to. A lot of times I actually went and I looked towards celebrities that were getting married and I was like, oh, well look at this babe, well, what do you think about that? I would literally like try to fish and find out what mm -hmm. kind of ring she, she wanted, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I watched quite a bit of romantic comedies with my wife during our yeah. dating time, and I'd be like, ooh, that's a cool ring, and she'd be like, hmm. But luckily, same, same. luckily for me, my wife had a Pinterest board of like, just wedding ideas, which I didn't mind because I also had my wedding planned in my head too, so I was <laughs> totally fine with it. I know some guys get a little weird about it, but I was totally fine with it and then she had like a whole ring section so it was very 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 simple for me. So basically know what style your wife wants and then go from there. So when you're finding a diamond you really need to consider all four of the C's. Just because it's massive doesn't mean it's a good diamond and just because it's tiny does not mean it's a bad diamond. Exactly. So first of all you have the cut of the diamond. So GIA has a system where they measure the diamond's facets and calculate various proportions along with visually examining it to evaluate how well it is designed and polished, as well as how symmetrical it is to give it a rating of excellent to poor. So just because you're not getting the best of the best, you don't need like the best of all the four C's to get an amazing diamond. It's just, you can. I mean, going forward, I think we should also mention that the best of the best are the rarest of the rarest as well. So like. Um, whereas excellent may be like the, the top of it, it may not be as attainable in terms of like finding the diamond as you would think. Now guys, the next one you want to think of is the color. And I think this is probably the one that you should put a lot of emphasis on because it's color, amazing. basically the, the, the more colorless a diamond is, the better quality it is. So it goes from D to Z and D is being completely colorless, and Z is pretty yellow. So I think this one's very important because it's probably the one that you can really notice with the naked eye. So I would try to find a diamond that has something, you know, in, in the higher range of color first. That's what I would go with. Yeah, I think, same here, because I think when you're looking, when, when, you, when your wife or your fiance looks at her ring, she's gonna notice the color. So you wanna make sure it's as clear as possible and not necessarily as big, just as clear, guys, okay? Right, now up next, guys, is the clarity. So this is pretty much what it looks like under a 10 times magnification, which no natural eye can ever see. So this one goes from flawless to included, which means basically if there's inclusions in your diamond, there's little like kind of specks. And a diamond is a natural thing from the earth. So if there aren't some inclusions in your diamond, chances are it might be a yes. fake diamond. So you, you want, you don't want inclusions, but it's good to see a few in there just to know that you've got a real diamond and you're working with a real product and not something made in a laboratory. So I mean, nine times out of 10, a diamond is going to have an inclusion in it. Yes. You know, so I mean, it is going to be there. Again, there are the cases where there's none, 
but that's super rare, man. Those are like very, very rare. So when you're looking at clarity, um, VVS2 or VVS1 means very, very slightly included, which means there's not much going on at all in there. And then SI is slightly included, and then I is just, there's some inclusions in there. So basically, if there's an I, you can see it with a naked eye, and then pretty much everything else is going to be very, very hard to detect without a microscope. If you look at where the inclusions are as well, sometimes if they're more off to the side or not very noticeable, you might have a better quality diamond and you 100%. might be able to get a better deal on like a VS versus a VVS because the inclusion's kind of off to the side and harder to notice. Okay guys, and last but not least, this is probably the C that everybody actually cares about and thinks about first is carat, and that is the size or the weight of the diamond. So a one carat diamond is equal to 200 milligrams, a two carat diamond is equal to 400 milligrams. It is based on weight. Okay guys, so there are two different ways to build a ring, and then there's, there's carats and then there's total carats. So if you look at my wife's engagement ring, which I can show you right now. Beautiful. There are two carats total in the ring, but the big diamond is 1.5 carats, and then all the little diamonds around it total up to another 0.5 carats. But even if the big diamond was only 0.5 carats, it would still be more expensive than all the little diamonds that totaled up to five carats. So if you have one solid diamond that has a big carat weight, it's going to be more expensive than building a ring that has, you know, three total carats, but you know, it's made up of a bunch of different size diamonds. So again, guys, this is particularly because of the rarity of the size of the diamond. Right, and not to say that either one is right or correct or wrong, um, that's just how the pricing is going yes. to go for you. I know a lot of people that have engagement rings that have like three pretty decent sized rocks on there, like three carats. I think, and to me, that would be the smart thing to it do. It looks good. Yes, exactly. Um, but it all is in preference to what your significant other is looking for and what you think they would like. So, you know, if you want to get them a big giant rock that's just sitting on a plain platinum band, it's gonna be a little more expensive. If you wanna do, you know, um, a smaller rock in the middle with kind of a border of little or diamonds, you're going to have less price. It's gonna look a little bigger, but you're also gonna get a better deal on it. So most girls that I've met and dated have definitely focused on size first, color second, clarity third, and cut. I don't even think they think about it as long as if it was big enough, it could be whatever shape it needed to be to be that big. So. I mean, I think I think of it the same way, dude. Mm -hmm. Like even when I just recently got a ring for myself and I was looking at the size of it, you know, I also wanted it to be, you know, I didn't want it to look yellow, you yes. know, that was like what I was focused on. I think everybody in general, right, for the most part. But guys, one really big thing to think about when you're buying that diamond or looking for that diamond, I mean, I looked at websites, I looked on Rodeo Drive, and I always had this thing in my head that I don't, like, cause one, you love your significant other so much that you don't want to get them something that's not great. But just because it's in the middle of the rating system, that's still a really, really good diamond, which most people don't tell you. Like they make you think you need like a flawless no. diamond to have a great diamond. And I will tell you that I've learned throughout, you know, marrying my wife and talking with my aunt and uncle who work kind of in the diamond is industry, that you do not need 100% perfect, perfect diamond to have something that sparkles on her finger and looks phenomenal. And sometimes if you know, you take a little bit off the other three C's, you can get a little bigger carrot. Yes, and also guys, this is an investment piece that you are gonna be buying for your significant other. So you wanna make sure that you really do your research and maybe re rewind this video a few times because this information, guys, is gonna be crucial in finding the perfect ring for her. Yes, guys, if you have any questions about you know finding the ring, how to pop the question, our email is down below. Leave a comment down below. We will chat with you. We can try to help you out because, I mean, I'll, we're gonna do this video, but my engagement proposal did not go. <laughs> 100% as planned. Blake killed it, did it in Paris, and was a badass about it. But I had some things planned and they just kind of fell through. So that's a whole nother video. But um, I hope this was super interesting for you. We'll have a link to the GIA website so you can learn from them 100% about the yes. cut, color, clarity, and carrot, the four C's that are very important when finding a diamond. Um, 
Be sure to hit that subscribe button. It really, really helps us out. If you haven't followed us on Instagram yet, please do that right now. We really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one. Cheers. Good luck, guys.